Okay, we've arrived at the final belt of tension, everyone. The pelvic belt. Yay! Yay! Yes. Yes, you've been working hard all week, working through all the layers, all the belts. And today, in today's session, we're going to learn how to specifically work with the pelvic belt. And you're also invited to work with any of the other belts, with other techniques that you've learned throughout the week. It's a way of kind of integrating it all together. So, Breeze very graciously volunteered to be the demo model today. Thank you. I look forward to working with you. Yeah, and I'm just going to explain a little bit about the pelvic belt first, and then we'll, and I'm going to demonstrate something, and then we'll move into our session. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. So, as Gitan started to talk about yesterday, the pelvic belt is really it's 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 a storehouse for one thing of our sexual energy. Our life force energy is there in our pelvic belt. In the, and as it starts to come up into our body, our stomachs often tighten to suppress it. So we're working a lot yesterday to loosen up the stomach. And we'll be working again today with the psoas. And the psoas muscle goes through both the pelvic belt and the abdominal belt. So that'll be a way you'll be working in the two belts simultaneously. And we want to free up this energy. We want to free up our sexual energy so it can continue flowing up our body. As that energy is able to move up, it feeds us. As it moves to our heart, it gets to connect with our love energy. As it moves to our throat chakra, it gets to connect to our creativity and our self-expression. As it moves up to our sixth chakra, it gets to be, come into meditation, intuition, awareness. And up and out, it gets to connect to the cosmos. It's this whole cycle of energy that is meant to run through our system energetically. And as we all know, there are many reasons why this energy gets shut down and suppressed. You know, sex is so shamed in our culture. We carry in our bodies a lot of shame, many of us around our sex or our sexuality. That shame tightens us in that area, forms lots of constrictions. We don't allow our energy to move. And, of course, if any of us have experienced any sort of violation in this area, it's children or adults, it doesn't matter. We form extra layers of holding, of protection, of tightening. We cut off often. We don't have a lot of sensation in our sexual organs. Um, we, don't, uh, we don't have as much access to pleasure as we would like or as much access to being able to surrender and release and let go. So there's a lot that we work with here and there's a lot of different reasons why there can be tension and holding in this area. So I, I just want to check in with you Bree for a moment and just see how is this, how is this impacting you as I'm talking? Um. Noticing that I'm a little floaty, <laughs> like I'm a little like, oh, I'm here, but I'm like floating away and mm -hmm. back. So because this is my main belt of trauma, so and I've done, you know, level three. I've done a lot of training. I've done SE work, but um, there's lots of layers. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, there's lots of layers. And we can't expect everything to get released and opened up all at once. And actually, our bodies couldn't be even integrated if that did happen. So working layer by layer. Yeah. The whole theme for this week has actually been sexuality. Um, mm -hmm. Everything that's out of all of my sessions have been that. Mm -hmm. So um, other ones prior were like surgical stuff and so this I know that I'm like working towards that so that makes me nervous or emotional mm -hmm. but I feel safe yeah so. and I'm gonna ask how do you notice that safety how do you know in this moment that you feel safe um, well I mean this is a beautiful container so mm -hmm. I feel safe with everybody here worked with you before, I feel safe with you, um, and, you know, it's really my breath that allows me to feel safe. Your breath. Mm -hmm. 
How does your breath allow you to feel safe? What do I you actually notice? feel, I, I feel really safe in my body, actually. Um, and so when I breathe, I can settle into the exhale. You can settle, mm -hmm. yeah. And as you're noticing that settling, I just noticed something in your face looked like it relaxed as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> Until I smiled. <laughs> This might be a good time to just let yourself scan your body and notice what resources are here for you. And if there's one or two resources that you'd like to bring into this session in your body. So my legs, my legs. Um, hands, mm -hmm. my chest. Mm -hmm. What's the feeling as you tune into your legs? What tells you that they're a resource for you? Um, they feel strong. They got me. They got you. <laughs> yeah, they got me. They got you. Yeah. Yeah. And as you say that, tears come. Yeah. Because yeah. they didn't always, mm -hmm. you know. So, um, my healing has enabled me to strengthen them. And I didn't always feel supported. And I feel very supported by my legs. So. So let's take a moment and just kind of let ourselves settle into that support of your legs. It wasn't always there, but it is there now. You're feeling that strength and that support of your legs. And the legs, of course, are a part of the pelvic belt, <laughs> part of what we're going to be working with today. Yeah. So I have some safety in that belt. Yes. Yes, you have safety in that belt. <laughs> good, to, good to realize. Good to realize. Yes. <laughs> That's good to realize. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yes. So you might have noticed we just went through a couple of pendulations there into activation and resource and activation and resource. And I'm in no rush. <laughs> We're going to get there, but we don't rush these sort of things. And you also mentioned your heart as a resource. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah. What's it feel like in there for you? I feel like it's like, um, like the biggest thing in me, you know, um, just warmth and love and um, mm -hmm. feels very peaceful. Peace, yeah. Even though I get nervous, I feel the fluttery. It's like I can choose to the peace of it. The peace of it. Yeah. And as you hold your heart there, yeah, as you hold <laughs> your heart there, what's that like? Um, I feel really connected to myself. An anchor. An anchor. Yeah, an anchor is great. Yeah, an anchor. There's the floatiness, and then you have the anchor. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. Let's welcome that anchor. Yeah. And not having to go into much history at all completely up to you. The story is not important in our work. But maybe can you give me a little bit of an insight on why you wanted to be the demo model for today working with the pelvic belt? What's happening there for you recently? Yeah, so um, I don't know how. So my psoases are chronically tight. Mm -hmm. This one is more so than the other one. Because of the surgeries, this is my dominant leg. I've relied more on it. Um, and there's just a very unbalanced pattern going on. Mm -hmm. And this one gets stuck holding. And I get, uh, I have pain more here, mm -hmm. um, but really in the, the cue on this one. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the left psoas is chronically tight. 
pain in the groin, pain in the QLs. Okay. You've had multiple surgeries, I know, because of a congenital hip issue. Mm -hmm. And they were all at a young age. And so, if you just take a few moments to check in with your pelvis right now as you're sitting here, how does it feel to you? What kind of sensations are there? I feel less here than I do anywhere else. Uh, so it's almost like a, a... I have to really like, I feel like I've got to drop in and explore to see if I can find feeling other than pain here. <coughs> As you said that, I have pain on the, the lumbar, too, mm -hmm. and then where the sacrum meets. And I'm just not going to um, No, so that's actually right there is feeling. So when you drop into that area, what you notice is numbness in areas of pain. Is that right? Yeah. 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 And I don't actually know if it's numb or relaxed. So, like, mm. I feel like it's maybe a little numb and a little relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of both. <laughs> But overall, there's not as much feeling, mm -hmm. or good feeling, perhaps, yeah. as you'd like there to be. Yeah, yeah. So you'd like more good feeling there. Mm -hmm. Yes, I would. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <sighs> so, uh, I'm going, I'd like to invite you to just start the breathing, but very softly. And I'm going to demonstrate four exercises yeah. that we're going to be doing in the course of working with this belt, mm -hmm. but I'll demonstrate them and I'll explain them to oh. the participants. Okay. And you can just start to move into your breath very softly, very easily. Like you said, it takes a little while to drop into this area. So I just want to give you a little bit of time to drop in here as I'm breathing. Am I going to lay down? I'm wondering, because I'm wanting to move my legs like this, am I going to then lay down on my back? I'm probably going to have you breathe for a little bit to okay. see what movement comes into your spine first, okay. and then we'll have you lay on your back. Yeah. Yeah, and I wrote the four exercises on the board there to make it easier for you to understand what we're doing. And so I'm just going to invite Bree to softly breathe and move into the space. It takes a little harder for her to move into the space and other parts of her body, so I want to give her time to do that. And as we're doing that, I'll demonstrate what the four exercises that we do to help open up the pelvis, what they look like. The first one, I'm going to tuck my shirt here, <laughs> is, thanks, with your knees bent, you're going to come up on your heels and up onto your toes and lifting up your pelvis as high as you can. My psoas is also very tight, so I don't lift very high. But you're going to lift up while you're breathing, and then you're going to clench and hold the pelvic floor, the pelvic diaphragm. So you're breathing and clenching. And then you can release for a few breaths. And then when you're ready, clenching again. So it's like this pulsation of clenching and releasing and clenching and releasing. And very quickly, this can bring charge into the area. And after doing this for a while, you can then do pelvic bounces with sound. You do it like this. Ha! Bring the energy up from the pelvis all the way up through our central channel, up through our body. And it's a way to help bring the energy in there and help it expand it and move through our body and bring up that energy. And already I'm starting to notice a lot of shaking and quivering in my pelvic floor and in my legs. It's there if I was just to let it go and not talk to you, there'd be a lot of shaking that would start here. Ah, so it starts to release the tensions that are in here. And after that, an exercise you can do is this butterfly, where you're exhaling and the legs close, inhaling the legs open. Ah. 
So you get the idea there. And then the final exercise is pelvic tilts, where your feet go back flat on the ground. We're keeping the belly soft. We don't want to tighten up the stomach and restrict the flow of the energy. Belly soft using our legs and feet. As we inhale, our pelvis tilts forward, our low back rounds, our belly expands. So we inhale, and then we exhale with our legs. We gently flatten our back, tilting our pelvis back, exhaling out. I'm using my legs and my feet. I am not using my stomach muscles. My stomach muscles are, per are completely soft and relaxed through this. So those are the four exercises that we can use to really open up the energy <coughs> in here. Yeah. Okay. So just checking in with you again. How are you feeling? I'm feeling like my cortex is slowing down. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. But yeah, good. Just supporting us. So let's just move into our breath. The session is going to look like how it's going to look for you. They've seen what they need to see. The rest is you yes. and I. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Actually, doesn't make me look like so. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, starting the gentle, deep, connected breathing. Letting yourself come into your pelvis. Letting the breath start to make connection with and helping to gently melt some of the holding that may be chronically there. When we have tightness in this belt, we will also have tightness in our jaw. And I'm noticing tightness in her jaw right now. So I'm just going to come with my hands and just offer some touch and some massage to her jaw. shoulders. Brie has a lot of upper body strength, but there's also a lot of holding in her upper body. the stretching her body is doing. She's finding her way with the breath. Starting to stretch into that QL she talked about it earlier. Some of the 
of tightness that comes. And so I'm just going to offer some support with that stretch. I'm putting one hand here to hold her hip. The other one supporting her side body. With this, I think we're also getting a bit of a psoas stretch starting. are also part of this belt. <coughs> and that was her left side. That's a side that she said has a chronic tension in the psoas muscle. going to support some of the low back here. I can't remember the exact number of surgeries she's had, but it's a lot. Eleven. Eleven. That's a lot of surgeries in this area. Let's support some of the same. sacrum where she said she has a lot of pain. some support, some stimulation, some work. Step back. Let the body respond. Give space. I'm watching. I'm attuning to her. I'm noticing what's happening in my own body. Feels like things are settling. We've had a few waves, a few pendulations of activation. So now I'm going to check in and see if she would be okay turning over and starting with the pelvic exercises. Just as I say that, more tremor starts to come up. So I'm going to put that thought on hold. <laughs>
and bring my hand onto her low back as support. Can you put it on my sacrum? On your sacrum? Sure. So she asked for my hand to be on her sacrum, so I'm holding it to here. Yeah, I got you, sweetheart. That way that just comes up, let that come all the way up. Don't let it get stuck here in your throat. Yeah, don't let it get stuck, let it come. Just the way you're doing it. of anger in your heart. Source again, feeling your legs. Yeah, the strength and the solidity that's here. How your legs are really here for you. Yeah, they're really here for you. Source of that. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Notice 
noticing if you're holding your neck and shoulders or if there's any movement that they would like to make. start to entertain the idea of coming on flat onto the mat and doing the pelvic exercises. Again, there's no hurry. back into your breath, just giving them some time to come back to your breath. Circular breathing. And her legs are strong, your legs are strong. Feeling your legs here, your feet. Really let both of these anchor you to the ground. you to lift up your pelvis and come up onto your toes. Yeah, come up and lift up your pelvis. And then also come up onto your toes. Yeah, and keep breathing. And then tighten your pelvic floor. And let the and hold, tighten and hold. Tighten, tighten, oh, tighten. I'll tell you when to relax. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so it's breathing, but keep breathing. Yeah, tighten, 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 and relax. Stay up, but relax your pelvic floor. Yeah, and let that, it lets your body, your, yeah. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> <It's affecting. laughs> Try to have something new every training. <laughs> you guys do. <laughs> yeah, great. So just noticing what happens in your body with that. There's that shaking, that tremoring, and that might be enough, yes, right there, and letting that come. You don't need to hold it up if the body's already responding that quickly. Just doing some light pressure in here to help open up the area between the pelvis and the heart. If you feel ready, I'm going to invite you to lift up again. I'm going to try it one more time. Lifting. Okay, keep breathing. Breathing in through your open mouth and then tightening your pelvis, tightening your pelvic floor. But don't stop the breath. Tightening, holding, holding, keep holding. Stay with your breath. And then still staying up here, just relax the pelvic floor, but keep your pelvis raised. Relax the pelvic floor. And now you can let go into bouncing your pelvis on the floor. And that's what the ha sound.
And notice you're gripping the mat. I'm going to give you my hand. Yeah, coming back to you. Tension the pelvic floor. Continuing to breathe. Can figure it now. How about we go into the butterfly legs? Okay. Okay. Yeah. So we're gonna go into the butterfly position where the soles of your feet are together. And then as you exhale, bring your knees up, inhaling, opening your knees to the side. Yeah. Oh, to inhale this. You can just relax your pelvis. jaw again as we're working with the pelvis. She's also keeps coming back to her jaw to move that. start to come. And just align that with your soft belly. Yeah. Put a hand behind her neck just support her, letting her know that I'm here.
those waves come up and through. Yeah. This is the first time in this session her neck has had this natural fluid movement happening on its own. So now you can feel the unwinding as it's going more up her spine. stuff on top of more stuff on top of more stuff. We do a little piece of work and then the body responds. And then it settles. That's a pendulation. Bend your knees, putting your feet flat on the ground. And we're going to do some pelvic rocking. Okay. Your neck can be flat. And I'm going to do a little bit of work in your psoas here. With this as well. So with your knees, bend feet flat on the ground. Using the legs. We want the belly to stay soft. Using the legs as you exhale. Your lower back can flatten, your pelvis can tip forward, and as you inhale, your lower back goes the other direction, your lower back comes up a little bit, the stomach expands. And it's all done through the legs and feet. Her pelvis stays on the ground, she's just rocking back and forth on her pelvis. But her pelvis is on the ground, she's not lifting it off, and the belly stays soft. And I'm going to do some work with her psoas, and her left side is her more tight side. So I'm going to start here on the right. And you draw, you find where the belly button is, and then where the bony part comes out of your hip, draw a diagonal line between the two. And I reach in at about a 45 degree angle inside the hip bone. And as she's moving, I'm going in softly, I'm going in, I'm not just digging in. I'm going in a little bit, as she inhales it softens, and then coming out with her toe, I'm just going in little bit by little bit, because otherwise this can be very painful to go in all at once, do not do that, go in bit by bit, and I'm just feeling in there, and you can start to feel this ligament that moves underneath your hand as she's moving her legs. The psoas is a hip flexor. Is this too much? Is it okay? You can go deeper. I can go even yeah, deeper, yeah, she yeah. says. She feels it, but she says even deeper. So I'm going to come up on my knees and use my body weight, not so much my muscle strength. And I'm watching her face to make sure that it's not too much. And she also knows she can tell me if it's too much. Yeah, she's starting to uh, on her face. Yeah, so letting the breath come into this, breathe. Yeah. And she's actually rotating and moving her pelvis around in my hands as well, and really directing where this is going and her psoas right there. Yeah.
ready, so I'll ask if I can go to the other side. And raise her hips and legs again. I'm feeling for her belly button and her hip bone. Diagonal line between the two. And I'm going to go in at a 45 degree angle towards her spine. And going in. The side is much tighter. Yeah, I'm going to change the angle of my hand a little bit. You let me know if you need me to be in a different place or at a different angle. And as she's moving her leg like that, it's like this ropey thing that's moving underneath my fingers. And it just let me in a little bit more right there. Yeah. You want deeper? Does that feel deep enough? We're doing a whole tour of Bree's intestines. <laughs> like that, you want me to go straight down. Okay, so she wants me to go straight in at a vertical perpendicular angle. I suggest when you start off in your sessions, go at a 45 degree angle. And if the person wants you to go like this, then you can, but only with their guidance. Yeah, as you can see, this is working for her. fight flight response and it contracts. I don't really feel threatened. There can be so much stored in our psoas. Yeah, just let that and notice your hands, the resource there. And something got to be completed there. It was an impulse in her system that wanted to happen. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
I was so excited the laughing came before the crying. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, yay! And then the sadness was like, wait, I gotta come out too. <laughs> A little bit oh, like that. Tears, yeah. sadness, laughter. Yeah. Oh, space for all of it. Thank yeah. you so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if you can send us some of this good energy now, back to the little one. Mm -hmm. flowers and like skipping no. <laughs> to like free her legs and like <laughs> loading them out. <laughs> There's no one there but they're like fairies and imaginary friends. <laughs> <laughs> questions as I look out into the room and I'm saying, how are you all doing? <laughs> yeah, take us and I'll take a breath together. Maybe I'd like 
like to share how they were touched in this session. Yeah. Oh, I'll share. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was sitting across from her, and it was, it was like when she was talking about the strength in her legs, it was like so connected, and these tears just came out of my eyes. And what came to me, Brie, was I love my legs. Yeah, I love my legs. I do love my legs. <laughs> I used to hate them. <laughs> I couldn't look at the mirror. But I love them now. They're my best friend. They hung out with me. They fought with me. When uh, <coughs> many other people didn't. They're my best friends. Get activated still easily. Yeah, so. I just want you to just keep like, yeah. resting. No, it's fine. It's going to come in waves. Okay. There's going to be little releases and waves, and that's not okay. Okay. Yeah. 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 Any questions? I love seeing your grief in active mode with the anger. Mm -hmm. I thought it was really powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Seeing all that pain, just like the rage. It was movement of it, it was just really powerful. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And then of course the calm after that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did we freak everybody out? <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Good. Yeah. What, what might it look like if other belts of tension would come in as well? If you do, if you do the, these first and just see what happens, and, and maybe it looks like some other tension comes up from mm -hmm. the previous in the week, and just follow that. Yeah, if you notice in the beginning, I was noticing a lot of tension in her jaw and neck, so I worked in there first, and that caused a, a, an activation and deactivation, and I was following a lot of her movements, and um, at one point I was working in her belly a little bit to help soften that. Um, these movements here, you can go through them. You can also go back, like if depending on the length of the session, you know, obviously we were doing this towards the end of the session, but if this was done at the beginning of the session, then maybe working in the chest or the neck somewhere else, then you could always come back to one of these. You don't have to go through all four again. You could just pick one or two and work with that. So, following what you're noticing in your client and also inviting their direction. You know, it was great that Brie was having me do something very different than what we normally do because that's what she needed. And she knew that. It, it's a very usual thing that the belt you work, and the belt above the one that you're working with, would start to contract mm -hmm. to prevent the release. So you go back there and you do some body work to keep that area mm -hmm. open. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering about Time, time frames, you know, certain modalities like EMDR, they say like 10 sessions and, you know, you can pretty much clear a trauma with the, or tapping, that there's various modalities that have sort of time frames on when it's likely that you may clear something. And with this work, it's, if someone has pelvic floor trauma, how long, how long, is there any sort of idea of how long it would take to clear it? Or is it completely dependent? Or is there enough anecdotal evidence in this work to know that, yes, people are actually, you know, they, they do heal their layers of armor mm -hmm. and how long that takes? Or I would say it's individual for each person. And even things like EMDR, I mean, I have people who come see me who've had over 50 sessions of EMDR. Yeah. So it doesn't really clear any trauma in 10 sessions or whatever the claim is. Everyone's a unique individual with their own layers of history, different types of traumas. Those different traumas interact with each other. They get stored in our body in different ways. And it's working with layer by layer. 
moving through the layers of tension, not only within a belt, but also through the belts. So it's, I wouldn't say that, that there's a set number. I would say the protocol of going through all the belts is the beginning. And then you can keep noticing where is there more or less trauma still being held in certain parts of the body and then continuing to work there. What would you say, Gita? It is very individual. So much can be achieved in one session in one person. In the other, you just need to do a whole bunch to get there. Yeah. Yeah. I, have a, I have a client, she still comes to see me. She comes on and off for a couple of years now. She, I forget the reason why she came in her first session. Something in her life. In her first session, she flashed back to when she was eight years old and was bit by the neighbor's dog. And she's been scared of dogs her whole life since then and wouldn't walk down the street if there was a dog. Mm -hmm. That got cleared out in that first session. She was walking from my place later that day and just walked right past the dog and was already past it when she realized, oh my god, I wasn't afraid. Mm -hmm. She had not come in for that intention. She had not even thought about it. It's what just came up in the session and completely cleared for her. Mm -hmm. And it's never been a problem since, and that was four years ago. Mm -hmm. And is the magic of this, like, is this something that we can do on our own, or is it really having the support that makes the difference? I would say, I mean, there's self, there's, uh, self breath practices. Whoa. Yeah. I mean, it's, there, I mean, right at the end of saying how, you know, being the mother role, yeah. there was definitely that part. I mean, we get, we are hurt in relationships. We are hurt by people. We need others to heal on a certain level. And there's things that we can do on our own as well. It's a mixture. We were not hurt usually by trees. And, uh, I know. Work and individual work both need. I've had such a felt sense of that, that trauma is so relational. It's so relational. You really need that support. Yeah. I just want to check in with you. Oh, don't feel yeah. like you're abandoning him. You know, oh, good. good. Check yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I'm good. I'm just stretching and I'm feeling like this is coming more online. Yeah. Sandra? Along the same lines, do you have a recommendation on, like, like a prescription on how often to practice? Like, do you a self-practice every week or...? <laughs> I would be happy if my clients spent five minutes a day. <laughs> Honestly, I mean, with the people I work with, yeah, I mean, I would love people to do something daily. Daily. Yes. Something. Something. Five a minutes, meditation, something. A meditation, some breath practice, whatever it's going to be daily. A fashion unwinding um, exercise, yeah. you can do it for ten minutes a day, mm -hmm. and it will go very deep if it's done daily. <clears throat> Yeah. And often with trauma, there is this feeling of helplessness that comes along with it in this wanting the practitioner to, to fix it for them. And so often there's a resistance to doing the practice. Mm -hmm. Daniel? It's kind of related to that. I notice I accumulate stuff all day long, you know, have a rough phone call, rough interaction yeah. with somebody. And so, you know, just going in the other room and, and really just kind of shaking out. I mean, dealing with more in the moment and allowing that or taking breaks here and there and just giving permission. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of those types of things don't really require somebody else to be there. It's just a little shake out or just a little mm -hmm. yelling or, you know, get in the car and scream for a little bit. I mean, shake your head. I mean, that, that can do it too. Mm -hmm. In my book, I list a few self-practice exercises. Really, time. And you can set a timer and you do certain things for a certain time and then you move on and then again. Is the Maya question unwinding? My facial unwinding is one of them, but there's also breath. Okay, so if you are by yourself and you want to give yourself a breath session, you set a timer for every, let's say, starting with five minutes. So the timer goes off, okay, you know it's time to resource. Yeah, so you can create your own pendulation with the timer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Other question, Jenny. So, I've got a couple of well, this is kind of weird, but so somebody has traumatic like trauma to this area through rape or something, mm -hmm. and then that person remembers it. And then someone doesn't remember anything, but they have pelvic floor trauma. Mm -hmm. How do you go about those two sessions the same? Or the same, because you're working with the body. Yeah. And mm -hmm. the, it, it doesn't have to be a conscious memory of anything. Okay. Most of my clients are coming in for stuff that happened to them before the age of three. 
Yeah. There isn't a whole lot of, there's no very little conscious awareness, but the body holds it and you're just working with the body. So how do you get somebody who's had serious trauma through rape to stop going to the store in their mind and flashing back? <clears throat> Are there any techniques for that? Covered in the BBTR training, I need you to answer that question because I'm yeah. What usually defines this person is that event. Mm -hmm. From that moment, they feel they are defined by that event. Mm -hmm. Rape is a very common thing, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So to support them, first of all, finding their external resources mm -hmm. so they can start to learn to regulate themselves meditation so they can actually track when they start to remember that event and to consciously and to consciously um, shift their attention from the memory to the now because in the now there is no danger body responds to the memory as if it was happening right now so learn to self-regulate, and this will come with time. It takes time to, to, to learn to do that. Um, finding your internal and external resources, and use them. And there will be an element where they're gonna have to tell their, if they want to, they're gonna have to tell their story. Right, it just seems to loop. It does loop, it that trauma loops, vortex I think loops. I drew on day one or yeah. two of the thing. That is the trauma vortex, and retelling their story adds more energy to that trauma vortex. And at the same time, you can't really tell them, well, I don't want to hear it. I mean, you, you know, you, without shaming, without bringing in shame into it. Um, so you can also say, you can also explain how, notice what happens when you tell the story. Is your body, are you feeling more activated right now, or are you feeling more peaceful? I'm feeling more activated. I, I get all the, the, the old stuff. Okay, trauma and healing, we actually need to expand your capacity for feeling more regulated, more centered. And so, and I, I'm very, I do a lot of psychoeducation with my clients. So I'm telling them, look, I know you want to tell me the story. We, we, I'm happy to go through parts of it. But in the end, what we want to focus on is making your capacity to feel settled, safe, more, to, get, to build that capacity, mm -hmm. and as we do that, then we can go more into your story if you want. Yeah. But we need to have a foundation to start with. You see, what yeah. type of work do you do? Are you uh, a counselor? I do shamanic work, and a lot of that in slow retrieval, and okay. there's a lot of this kind of thing. But I work with women, so yeah. it's very common. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. to have, um, and I'm just thinking of one person in particular who has very traumatic rape. Mm -hmm. um, and she's seeing a lot of people, and it's not getting better. And the sessions we're in is not really, she goes to catharsis and then calms, bring her back to the now, mm -hmm. definitely, and then keeps going to like 10, to 10, to 10, and yeah. it's not really working so to, to bring her into the now. Yeah, you have to stop it before the catharsis, yeah. noticing just the slightest little bit. When you think about telling me the story, just notice what happens, right. and then coming back to her breath. Um, if she's going to 10 already, it's already a lost cause. Right. It's working in that 0. 0.5 to 1 range. 0. 0.5 to 1 range. Mm -hmm. Working with a little bit of breath. A little bit of movement. <coughs> yeah. What do you and mean by going time, to 10? Time, the person learns to regulate themselves. And they start to feel when activation <coughs> is coming before it escalates. So that's a good time to just back off yeah, and find the resource. And then, well, no matter what the trauma is, person gets to learn that they are not their story. It's something to, that happened to them, but it does not define them. There's a bigger part of them that's not involved in that. So their whole life does not have to be defined by one event the life after the event. And many people get stuck, and that's PTSD. Right. Yeah. And a person gets stuck in constantly looping around in that event, 
and they get activated and that's the only way they can feel themselves is then when they're uh, activated. There's no sense of themselves in any other time. They either shut down or that they're dissociated or, or they're activated. Nothing in between. So we need to support them to realize that there is something in between. You don't have to be activated or shut down. So we're going to do a general Q&A tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, we have time for like one more question about, was there any questions about this working with this belt? <coughs> oh. Yes, um, yesterday, I, I received some psoas mm -hmm. stuff, and I noticed that it felt like deep body work, like it felt the physical kind of pain, mm -hmm. good pain, but I didn't feel like I was sensing an emotion with it. Is there always an emotion with it and I just didn't tune in, or is there not necessarily like an emotion that comes up? Because I she felt like just body work, but not mm -hmm. like emotional. Were you breathing during it? Just <laughs> <laughs> Try it with the breath today and see what happens. And it could be a very different experience. Yeah. Yeah. 90% of the and time. We stop breathing and we stop feeling. Yeah, 90% of the time, the emotion doesn't come because we're not fully breathing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. One more question about the pelvic belt. <laughs> So, our schedules change for a little bit.